Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the 34th Pirantes of Architecture. As Maya mentioned, the topic of this year's conference is Surface of Architectural Space. This is quite an ambitious title that already in itself evokes different interpretations and meanings. For it is the surface that constructs spatial effects by which architecture communicates. And it is through surfaces that buildings declare both autonomy and participation in its surrounding. So, first uh, presentation today is by Tadej Juranovic, who will present his master thesis, Sensorial Experience of Architecture of Retreat, which is the end result of three years research and experience in designing and practicing architecture. The, the thesis was conceived at Faculty of Architecture in Ljubljana under the mentorship of Mitya Zorz and co-mentorship of Sebastian Gurosh. Today, welcome, the stage is yours. of my master thesis, which was the end result of three years of research and also experience uh, in, uh, okay. uh, uh, in doing and living architecture. Because you see, um, this process was not just uh, theoretical, it was uh, also based on my personal experience um, with constructing and living in a remote house in the middle of the woods. And uh, this was completely away from the city and uh, from the nearest three kilometers from the nearest village uh, where I, I stayed, stayed for approximately six months. And uh, this retreat period um, gave me some of the most memorable moments. And um, it strongly affected the way I see um, the, not just the world, but how I see and experience the architecture. So I want to share this experience with you and then uh, as a consequence I also want to address uh, the, another project, the stone house, uh, at the end and uh, maybe I'll touch also the, 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 the question of this year's conference theme. So, but let me first briefly say a few words about the uh, sensorial uh, and sensory because I, um, how, uh, I made the difference between the two words um, because uh, it is uh, the difference in the way of our perception. As you know, sensory perception uh, is the more <coughs> primal perception, but uh, uh, the senses are always limited and are outward bound. But in addition to the sensory perception, we have this inner uh, experience, this inner world, that uh, this is this subtle, subtle uh, but deep uh, sensorial experience, uh, and uh, it uh, it includes our thoughts, mind patterns, memories, and all the conscious and unconscious processes. Uh, so, for example, we all hope, know and have uh, this kind of experiences. If we look on this example, when you look at this picture, you don't see just textures and colors, uh, but the, the very essence of the image may speak uh, uh, through the surface and touch something deeper in you. So you, you suddenly see in this ruin maybe the passing of the time, or um, some memory may arise on the surface. So this is this uh, uh, sensorial experience that, that reaches beyond uh, just the sense of sight. Mm. Now, uh, how I have defined the retreat architecture is uh, in comparison with a weekend house. Now, as you know, the weekend house uh, in the weekend house, one may withdraw from his usual uh, living environment, and uh, uh, but his or her common living pattern uh, normally doesn't change. But in the contrast, in the retreat architecture, uh, one not only withdraws from one's usual environment, but also radically modifies his or her common dwelling pattern. Uh, this is the basic difference, and there is also then the difference of the duration. Normally, retreat uh, uh, is a longer and is not seen just as a, a period of relaxation. Now, in this context, I uh, examined four, uh, four well-known personae, 
uh, whose dwellings uh, fit well with the context of uh, the architecture of retreat. Uh, first one, okay. First one is, uh, as you know, uh, the uh, Frank Lloyd Wright Falling Water. Now, um, which I regard as a retreat architecture because uh, um, Wright made it very clear that uh, for the inner freedom, uh, one must break uh, with many of the commonly accepted ways of living. Um, so, uh, the falling water is the embodiment of this freedom. Uh, now, the second case study was of the philosopher who also had a big influence on uh, uh, Frank Lloyd Wright. This is uh, Thoreau's uh, famous cabin in the woods where he also built this house and stayed uh, in, uh, for two years in the woods and then he extensively wrote about his experience in the um, book uh, Walden. Now the third example is uh, the example of the um, bowling and tower, so-called bowling and tower of Carl Gustav Jung. This, this was his more than 30 years long experiment um, and it is interesting how he um, explained that uh, his research of the unconscious uh, was not enough. He had to build this uh, stony structure and uh, through the time um, you can see how it reflects uh, this uh, self-inquiry and uh, um, introver in his introverted nature. Um, now the last but not least, uh, um, the mounted hut of the philosopher Martin Heidegger where he would retreat from his no normal uh, academic lifestyle uh, and there he would uh, experience sim simple life and um, from which he could then write his philosophical insights. Now in all the case studies, uh, as also was in my experience, there were some, uh, some common sensorial and experiential features which I have divided then into several, uh, several uh, categories. Um, so the first one is, uh, as I mentioned before, is just a simple action of retreat can already cause the sensorial experience. And uh, here I must add that uh, there must be some kind of inner readiness, uh, or in other words, uh, one should not force uh, this kind of uh, experience. Uh, and then there is sensuality, or in, in, others, uh, in other words, multisensory perception of the envir environment, which can be caused uh, uh, by the nature and uh, natural materials, all these can have a uh, can be a starting point to a sensorial experience. Now, uh, then there is spatial openness. Here, the question is how the house opens and connects to the outside. Uh, but it's interesting how, in the context, uh, co uh, contrast to the, to the spatial openness, also an intimacy played a crucial role in all the uh, case studies. Uh, so, for example, Wright talked how a house must be open to the outside, but at the same time it has to have this real sense of shelter, this strong intimacy. Uh, and with, 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 with that, uh, this is, uh, there, uh, the, the shadow plays also the crucial role. What, what happens is that in shadow spaces, as you may know, uh, um, this different kind of perception can take place. Uh, which again is not based uh, only on, this, on the sense of sight. And then all of these may already be the, the, the opposites, light, shadow, and this uh, meeting of the opposites then uh, cre that, uh, can create this uh, uh, rich uh, sensorial experience. Uh, here for example also um, the, the straight line, how the straight line and the curves ha have a different effect on us. And, uh, this, is, uh, this means that also certain shapes can, uh, can evoke feelings or memories um, and so on. Now, there is uh, also one quality that I didn't mention, uh, but maybe more than ever needs its place not just in architecture, but also in the other aspects of human life. Uh, this is this one. The silence, uh, or we could call it the emptiness. It uh, it was strong trigger also for the uh, the, the the C G Jung uh, through to Rowe and uh, also Heidegger. And um, why I'm saying this because this was also very strong ex experience uh, when I went to live in the woods. Uh, so 
when I moved from the city, I was completely struck by the, this sense of emptiness. And um, uh, I must say that this was one of the strongest experiences in my life, uh, because in comparison with the city, there were so little distractors and uh, not much things to cling to. And uh, it affected how, uh, how I approached the renovation and how I uh, saw the architecture. Because um, when I came, you see here, it was like this. And then uh, through this uh, intimate process of observation, uh, I would know what the shape a certain material should take, for example. Um, if we take uh, the chimney here in the middle, because I was the maker of all the things, uh, I was also a mason, so th this intimate process, I, through this intimate process, I know, for example, I knew, for example, that uh, the plaster, uh, you know, this uh, corner, how, how it took the shape of this smooth shape, and uh, working with hands, uh, the radius was that of my hand, for example. And this natural principle then uh, uh, was affected, affected in the slightest details. Here you see how, for example, uh, the window opens and uh, um, how the details, which materials to use for the details. And somehow I, uh, I felt that this is the entrance uh, uh, door handle and somehow I felt that I have to leave the metal untreated so this outer uh, door handle would form in a slightly this thin layer of rust and uh, it was important because being in the nature somehow I wanted to capture this process of, uh, of aging and then this uh, constant, constant play between the new and the old took place. And then there was this light, uh, there was no electricity, but um, as you know, this candlelight makes this soft, uh, soft illumination uh, and uh, it waves, waves slightly, so uh, the, the space lit with the candlelight, uh, it, it has some kind of relaxing quality to it. Now, uh, when designing the kitchen, I really realized how every detail affects the experience of the house. So, for example, I made this uh, uh, wooden spoon, which, uh, as you may feel already in its essence, is very light and uh, warm, but it affects how you, uh, uh, how you then experience the whole uh, space uh, the, of the house. But in, the, in this co context, uh, uh, also uh, an outside uh, a shed was renovated where the where the toilet is here. For example, I uh, I reused the roof tiles to make the facade, and uh, it was so nice because uh, I removed the door and this intimate uh, intimate connection with the environment and observation uh, was ever present. Now, uh, during this six months of my retreat. Uh, I've had a lot of memorable moments, but uh, I must say that one of the most serene moments for me was the, was the experience of uh, hot showering in the winter night. So this is the photo that I made uh, just before I left, and uh, it was a full moon in the winter, and then uh, this, uh, the stars, and this warm house, and the complete silence. And uh, uh, there, somehow, I knew that um, I noticed that how architecture can serve as a starting point, point for enhancing the, the human experience of dwelling. Now, uh, this is the true meaning of the sensorial. So, in this context of the master thesis, I wanted to implement all of these experiences into the new project of the retreat architecture. So, uh, this, is, this is the ruin that you already saw. Uh, and it is located in Slovenian Istria, just here uh, in this region. This is a completely different environment from the previous one. Uh, here, the main, uh, the pre pre prevalent building material is the stone. Uh, so this, here you see the top, two commonly found uh, stone structures, the stone, uh, stone wall, and uh, attached to it, this ho little house for the shepherd. And the ruin, uh, 
the roof and the, one of the walls already collapsed, but I wanted to preserve the ruin and uh, um, what the purpose was to attach the house to the terrain in such a way that there will be a strong connection, uh, strong integration with the environment. So, um, uh, with, with this connection, uh, three outside terraces were formed and uh, close to the house, uh, three outside spaces. So before uh, I show you the spaces, just a quick reminder of the sensorial qualities, because each space uh, contains or is, uh, I had in mind when I designed it, is specifically chosen qualities. So uh, the each space uh, has a, a specific atmosphere. Now the, the upper terrace is the entrance to the house, and since this is the top of the hill, I wanted to preserve its openness. But in contrast, the lower terrace, for example, is the, is, is the place where I designed a uh, herbal garden. So this, uh, pr the prevailing winds would then bring this beautiful scent closer to the house. And if we look on the, the other side, there you see these outside spaces on the left. This intimate space of the outside uh, toilet here, one can, in the darkness and this stream of light, experience one uh, very calm and uh, a silent atmosphere. Now on the facade, you can also in this uh, house see the interplay between the old and the new. And uh, then this, the, there is difference in characters of the room, which also shows on the different sizes of the windows. So let us uh, see this side, here also this uh, old and new, and I will show you uh, now this detail, this is the, st the stone gutter that here in the warm climate um, uh, this uh, water for, for fall is formed and uh, the water then collects in the uh, reservoir. And then if we look at this, the, the section, you see this uh, different atmospheres of the room and uh, what you may notice is that uh, the ground floor is mainly made out of the stone where the uh, upper, uh, upper floor is uh, clad in wood. Now this is not just to serve uh, a, a uh, specific atmosphere but also to serve a specific function. Um, so the house uses natural heating and cooling systems and um, I tried also to make it uh, self-sufficient because it, this is the retreat uh, architecture. So this chimney, for example, uh, how it's used uh, to, to warm the whole house and uh, also for the ventilation. ventilation. Um, this is the, uh, this, this, the stone shadow uh, uh, ground floor, which then turn, in the cold period turns to this uh, fire room and here the the, the, the stone and the fire are two basic materials that form uh, this atmosphere and on the other side, in the baby room, the water is added and then this uh, small window as a connection with the outside is also very intimate uh, space. Now the last, uh, the last room uh, is here you see it in the middle uh, from the outside this is the room that uh, summarizes uh, the essence of the retreat uh, this is the room for contemplation, and, you, uh, and as you can see it in the middle, it opens to the both sides of the, uh, the house. And uh, this is the only room it, uh, which gives the all-encompassing view over the valley and the nearest uh, village. So uh, this window frames the view and offers a inner spare, a space of silence where one can just be um, in the presence. Now, when designing this kind of spaces, every, as I said before, every detail adds to the experience. So this is the stone, uh, this is the door handle that I made for this house. And uh, as you can see, uh, um, on one hand we have this uh, cold, uh, massive stone, uh, and then on the other this light, uh, smooth, uh, warm wood. So at the end, I want to show you how this process of researching uh, and ex especially my retreat period uh, affected the way I um, approached other proje projects. Um, as a part of the house, for example, I made this um, because I also played the guitar, this guitar stand, because I saw the guitar 
as a part of the part of the house, and uh, then uh, to express its inherent beauty, and then the, the guitar becomes this levitating, uh, almost like a sculpture. Um, so, uh, so this uh, this retreat uh, period uh, had a strong effect on me, and um, it's part of me in a way when I heard. Uh, the, the conference, uh, this question, this year's uh, question of the conference theme where is the surface of the architecture? Is it only in its form? Well, in my experience, uh, it reaches far beyond its form. Um, the, the, the strong, uh, strong uh, architectural space has somehow the capacity to give us this uh, deep experience and uh, uh, evokes feelings that, that, that then become a uh, part of us, uh, but this process also works in both, both ways, uh, so the environment and the architecture that we create is always the reflection of our inner depths, of our um, existential attitudes and of our innermost nature, so thank you for the attention.